History reminds us of the events that took place in the historical past. And Back in History sets out principally to make a documentation of the events that took place in Africa and the ones that are connected to Africa. In today's edition, we narrate the story of a government-sponsored kidnapping of a Nigerian politician in faraway London with intent to return him to Nigeria to face prosecution. It was the first of its kind in Nigeria's history. The kidnapping was successful, but at the airport, the kidnap was foiled. The kidnap victim was Alaji Umaru Diko. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. Umaru Diko served as Nigeria's Minister of Transportation during the civilian administration of President Shehu Shagari. He was one of the most powerful ministers of that administration. He was an in-law to the president and was very close to the president to the knowledge of several persons. Though he served officially as Minister of Transportation, Omaru Diko was literally everywhere in Shagari's administration. Aside being related to the president by marriage, Omaru was actually an intelligent person in whom the president could assign a number of responsibilities. He held a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of London. Shagari completed his first four-year term in 1983 having taken his oath of office in 1979. He contested for a second term and won. He was sworn in, but he barely stayed in office for the second term when the military struck. Major General Muhammad Buhari became the new man in charge of Nigeria and appointed Tunde Idiabon as the deputy military head of state. Shagari's government was effectively brought to an end and Shagari was arrested and kept under house arrest. Shagari's ministers were declared wanted by the military and for fear of the military, most of the ministers flee the country. One of the ministers that was top on the wanted list was Umaru Diko. Umaru escaped and took residence in London. While there, he mounted serious criticism against Buhari's military administration and termed it draconian, authoritative and dictatorial. The military government then conceived the plan to have him arrested and brought back to Nigeria at all costs and by all means. The government accused him of having embezzled billions of dollars from oil revenue while serving as minister in Nigeria. Omaru was far beyond the reach of the military government. He was in faraway London and getting him to return to Nigeria was a difficult mission to accomplish. Buhari's military government needed him badly and a covert and clearly unconventional plan was then hatched. The military government enlisted the services of Israeli security agents. Some reports have said that the agents were of the Mossad. These agents worked with Nigerian security personnel and arrived at a plan to look for Maru and bring him back to Nigeria in a crate. The plan included kidnapping him in the United Kingdom and injecting him with a substance to disable him for the time being or simply drugging him. He would then be put into a coffin or crate and moved into the plane as diplomatic baggage. Having concluded on the plan, the next thing to do was the execution of the plan. Omaru's exact location in the United Kingdom was not known. Detectives were thus deployed to first establish his location. The team of Nigerian security men was led by an ex-Nigerian army major, Mohamed Yusufu. They moved into London and rented an apartment in Cromwell Road, London and posed as persons fleeing from the new military regime in Nigeria to reside in the United Kingdom for their safety. They settled at Cromwell Road because it was a place having several Nigerian citizens and they suspected that Omaru Diko might be living there or at least in the neighborhood. The Mossad agents rented rooms in hotels in the neighborhood and posed as anti-appetite activists. The two teams then began work. The mission was to locate where Omaru Diko lives. They sat at eateries and other open places. They moved around the streets in the neighborhood. 
they all had photos of Umaru Diko and could easily identify him if they saw him. They moved more in the areas where Nigerian citizens were more in number. Eventually, they zeroed their search to West London, particularly to Hyde Park, where many wealthy Nigerians lived. Umaru was not immediately seen. On 30th June 1984, a Mossad agent driving on Queen's Way in Bayswater spotted Umaru Diko. He quickly parked his car and walked the street unsuspiciously until he saw where Umaru Diko entered his house in Porchester Terrace. The house was duly marked by the agent and the director general of Mossad at the time, Nahum Ad Money, was quickly informed. He ordered surveillance on the house and from then on, the house was constantly watched by the agents. Having located Umaru Diko's residence, the next thing was to make final preparations on how Umaru would be kidnapped and moved immediately to the airport and flown back to Nigeria. The Nigerian embassy in London was aware of the mission of the agents and was ready to provide every needed assistance and facility to carry out the kidnap. Since Umaru Diko was to be drugged, a medical expert needed to be on standby. Mossad then recruited one Levi Ari Shapiro, an Israeli medical doctor who was an expert anesthetist. He was flown into London to participate in the operation and his job was to inject Umaru Diko with a substance that will disable him and make him unconscious but without killing him and once that was done, Omaru will be put into a crate and transported to Nigeria by air. When the agents became 90% sure that the kidnapping was just a matter of their moving in to pick Omaru, they called the embassy to ensure that there is a plane on standby at the airport in London. On the evening of 3rd July 1984, a Nigerian Airways Boeing 707 arrived at Stansted Airport in the United Kingdom from Lagos State, Nigeria. The plane arrived empty and its mission was to convey Maru Diko in a coffin or crate back to Lagos. The pilot informed the authorities that the plane had arrived to pick up diplomatic baggage from the Nigerian High Commission. There were Nigerian security agents inside the plane who told the authorities that they were in the airport to protect the diplomatic baggage. The following day, being 4th July 1984, Umaru Diko was kidnapped in front of his house while he went out for a walk. He was forced into a vehicle and driven away by the agents. He was then drugged into unconsciousness by Dr. Shapiro, the Israeli. He was moved to the airport as diplomatic baggage for onward movement to Nigeria. But unfortunately for them, the crate was not properly labeled in accordance with the applicable laws to stop the customs from inspecting the so-called diplomatic baggage. This is because the kidnap and the movement to the airport needed to be done in split seconds and in that process the vital documentation and labeling was not done. Moreover, Omaru's secretary Elizabeth Hayes saw when unknown persons kidnapped her boss into a waiting vehicle and zoomed off. She then notified the authorities and every security point in the United Kingdom was put on alert. The agents did not know this, so they kept going without suspicion. Since the crate did not have the expected diplomatic labeling, customs officials who had received an all ports warning alert were able to open the crate and lo and behold, a human being had been drugged, disabled, and placed in the crate for export. This is how the customs officials foiled the kidnap. Omaru was immediately taken to the hospital for resuscitation. Lucky enough, Omaru was resuscitated and brought back to life. The entire mission sponsored by the military government of Buhari and Idiabon had failed at this point and the consequences were to follow next. 
17 men were immediately arrested by the United Kingdom security agents. They were charged to court. Four were convicted and sentenced to prison terms of between 10 to 14 years. Among those convicted and sentenced to terms of imprisonment were the Israeli medical doctor that drugged Omar Odiko. Another person was Yusufu, the retired Nigerian major. Another person was Alexander Barak, Felix Abuti, or Mossad agents, and others. Analysts have said that Mossad took all the risk for Nigeria because of its interest in Nigeria's oil and the need to please the military regime in Nigeria at the time. The British government expelled Nigeria's High Commissioner from the United Kingdom together with another senior staff of the embassy. Diplomatic relations with Nigeria were also broken for two years. The kidnap saga seriously discredited the military regime in Nigeria and internationally. Omar Odeko remained in the United Kingdom throughout the remainder of Buhari's military administration until the regime was sacked. Omaru later returned to Nigeria and participated actively in Nigeria's return to democratic rule. He was indeed a lucky man to have survived a high-powered kidnap and transportation plan that involved security experts from two countries whose backing by the government of Nigeria, financial and otherwise, appears to have been without limits. Nigeria and Israel denied their involvement in the saga, but the denials made no sense to many people. The kidnap of Alaj Umar Udiko in London, his being drugged to render him incapacitated, his being placed in a crate as though he was a lifeless commodity, the dispatch of a Nigerian Airways jet to convey him to Nigeria, the foiling of the plan at the airport, the, the participation of the Nigerian embassy in the United Kingdom, and the trial and conviction of participants, and the bad press that followed, remain in history as one of the most embarrassing diplomatic moments in Nigeria's history. Thanks for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel or follow the page for regular notification on every new video. I remain your friend and host Ekemen Udim wishing you the best of time as you walk with me as I take you back in time to the events that took place in the historical past.